There's history here. And here. There's history there. History is everywhere. Welcome to the Southern Oregon History Show. Our show features historical museums and societies from throughout Jackson County. I'm Amy Drake, Exhibitions Curator at the Southern Oregon Historical Society and your host for today's show. With me today is Julie Thompson from the Lake Creek Historical Society. Welcome, Julie. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. You're welcome. Um, how did you get involved with the Lake Creek Historical Society? Well, actually, I was looking back through the old newsletters and I found out they started in 1990 and my husband and I signed up in 1991. So, so right away. Right away, yep, it was exciting, you know, for out there. They had a couple different projects that we got involved in and we mm -hmm. were just really excited to help out the community and, and help restore the old building and the old uh, bridge and stuff, so mm -hmm. yeah. So Do you remember what some of your first projects were? Oh gosh, I think a lot of it was just doing the hall. The hall was the main. When you say um, the hall, oh, what the do hall. you mean? What is it? It's called Pioneer Hall, and that's where we have our offices for the Historical Society. And it just used to be the community gathering place. And we would have Christmas dinners there, and everybody would come, quote, out of the hills and come and have a nice uh, potluck dinner. And we had an mm -hmm. old pot belly stove in the corner and outhouse, a three-seater outside. And, you know, that's what it all kind of started with. And then mm -hmm. uh, when the Historical Society got going, um, they were able to get grants and things. And, and um, we built on, the outside was in disrepair. It was kind of falling apart. And so they got it from, because it was built in the 40s, they were able to get the lease from the community club that was out there. Mm -hmm. And um, through that, they were able to get grants and things to refurbish the building and add on the offices and add on indoor restrooms and take out the pot belly stove <laughs> and put in heating and, and cooling system. So, okay. Yeah. What was the inspiration for organizing the Historical Society? Just to save the buildings and save our heritage out there. Okay. Because we have a really strong, strong community and strong heritage out in that area. A lot of German descent families came. Mm -hmm. and settled the area and um, they built the Grange. They built the first um, community hall which was an octagonal building which I never got to really see. I've just seen pictures because it burned down oh. and then they built this one in the 40s and then we refurbished it in the 90s. Okay. So, yeah. so where is Lake Creek? Lake Creek, if you uh, go out on Highway 62, like you're going to go to Crater Lake, and then you'll see Highway 140, and you'll head east on Highway 140, turn right, and it's about 12 and a half miles out from White City. Okay. And what, what is in Lake Creek? Is it a town? Is it a village? Well, that's been really interesting. <laughs> it used to be a post office, so it was sort of designated a town, but now it's just a community, mm -hmm. and uh, we are part of Eagle Point. That's our his, our. Uh, um, addresses now. Okay. And so um, I guess when you get below a certain amount, the Postal Service went away and went and conglomerated into Eagle Point. Okay. So, but we are just a, a strong community and we have a general store, we have a fire department, we have the community hall, and we have a Grange Hall. Okay. And we're surrounded by large farms and um, just lots of nice people. How many people are there? Wow. Well, it's growing. Ish. Is yeah, ish. I'd say probably I don't know, 60, 70 people out in the area. Okay. Yeah, because we kind of branch out as you go up the creek and stuff, and and uh, yeah, probably about that many. Okay. You keep mentioning mentioning the strong community. Can you tell us more about that? Well, I was um, not only involved in the uh, historic part of it, but I also helped start the uh, fire department out there. Oh. And we did that to lower the insurance rates for everybody because we are way far out from anybody else. And so we formed our district, and which was a 10-mile radius. And uh, we had three stations so that it would cut down your ISO number, which is the insurance number. And so everybody would get cheaper insurance. Mm -hmm. And so I was the training officer for the volunteer fire department for 10 years. Oh. Yeah. And then um, I retired from that, if you want to say that. <laughs> but um, still involved. Uh, mm -hmm. But we would have different fundraisers for that to keep going because it was all volunteer and then we were able to get onto the ballot and um, grandfathered in I guess as a fire department so now it's it's uh, 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 given their funds from the, from the county so yeah, yeah. <coughs> 
So again, with a strong community, was that part of the driving force for starting the Historical Society to like help preserve, help enhance the community? I think so. I, I think um, uh, Ralph Wenger, Dr. Ralph Wenger was a chiropractor in Eagle Point, but he lives in Lake Creek. Okay. And he was the driving force behind this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And um, he just wanted to see our heritage stay there and not just kind of go by the wayside. So. Um, we don't have a whole lot of buildings there. Mm -hmm. We only have the three, basically, and the fire department. And uh, so he was the driving force to get people together to refurbish that building so it just didn't kind of melt away and go away. Okay. Who, so he was the founder, would you say? Yes, he was. Who's taken it over since then? How, how is the organization run now? Um, it's still the same. We still have a seven-person board. Um, two of the members that are on the board now were on the founding board. Oh, wow. So they've been there through the whole thing. That's some real dedication. And I know, it really <laughs> is. And um, I got mixed up in it like five years ago. Um, one of the persons was leaving, and uh, they said, would you like to come down? And so I went down and sat down and listened, and I went, sure. So now I'm the <laughs> secretary, you know, so I take mm -hmm. all the minutes and those kind of things. But um, we, right now we're doing a project where uh, we are renovating the cemetery that's out in that area. Where is the cemetery? It's about four and a half miles past the store. Okay. Um, the South Fork of Little Butte Creek comes across and you cross that bridge and then you go up the hill too. But it's on private property. That's mm -hmm. the, kind of the thing. So it's not open all the time. Um, but we went in there, a group of people went in there and they cleaned it all up and brushed it out and found the graves and put pavers on the graves and stuff and we're going to fence it next, next in the fall. Mm -hmm. So yeah, cleaning it all up and so people can come and enjoy it. Wow. Yeah. So you mentioned yes. you're the secretary. Yes. How, how does the Historical Society work? How does it run? Um, well, the funding was cut in 2007 for all right. historical societies. So we just basically run on fundraisers. And we rent out the hall, and mm -hmm. we have a really nice park that adjoins it. And so we have lots of really nice weddings, mm -hmm. anniversaries, birthday parties, christenings, you know, all sorts of stuff going uh -huh. on there. It's so a real people, community it, place. It is. It really mm -hmm. is. And when before the Historical Society had it, I used to take my kids down there because it has beautiful wooden floors mm -hmm. and had them roller skate. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's the kind of building it was. It was mm -hmm. just, you know left open, there was no keys, but then later on when the Historical Society took it over, they had to lock it up. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so you just come and rent it and um, you can pretty much, there's guidelines on what you can and can't do there, of course, mm -hmm. you know, but we have a band uh, shell out in the park and um, a lot of people have, like we had a, uh, uh, we have some um, Hispanics people that live in the area and they had a wedding there mm -hmm. and the mariachi band was up on the stage. Oh my gosh, it was wonderful. You could hear the music <laughs> way up the creek. It was just, it was great. So, you know, just all sorts of, we've had memorials there and, mm -hmm. and baby showers and, you know, so the hall is rentable. We have a full kitchen mm -hmm. and then we have the restrooms and then we have the park outside. So you can do either way or both, whatever you want to do. You've had so. reunions there too, right? Yes, we have we had mm -hmm. reunions, yeah. And every June we have our anniversary there. Because okay. that's our anniversary for the Historical Society. And we just celebrated our 25th this ah. last June. So we have a good potluck. I know, it was really great. So, yeah, it was fun. We had it inside because that day it was like 107. Ugh. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Of course. Yeah. Um, what other kinds of events do you have? Well, back in 90, not 90, I keep saying 90 for you, but in 2011, mm -hmm. you were the one to come out and do the History Made by You. Right. And we were the very first one, so we were mm -hmm. all learning how to do all that. <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun. We, uh, it was. We were out, definitely learning. <laughs> we did. We brought out all the history of the area and mm -hmm. where it's kind of progressed to now and uh, brought out, like, took it for pre-electricity uh, and pre-telephones. And through that whole era of getting that out there, because it took them a while to get electricity and the phones out there. And then, How long, can we talk about that for a little bit? How sure. long did it take? Oh gosh, I don't think they got electricity out there until the 40s. So, it, you know, people were just... And electricity just, came to the rest of the valley, or oh, first came to the valley right. in like 1910-ish, yeah, right? Yeah, really early, yeah, so. yeah. So it took quite a while to get out there. Mm -hmm. And we, um, I was, I did some interviews of some of our, um, residents and one boy, our man remembers as a boy, 
getting the electricity out there and how great it was. You know, you could have a, one light bulb on in the house. You know, and they were really excited. You know, I mean, it beats kerosene lamps, I guess. Right. So, yeah. So it was, it was something else mm -hmm. to have that. And the telephone. I'm not exactly sure when the telephone got out there. Okay. I know when I moved out there in 72, it was still party lines. Explain and what that means. Party lines means that you have, um, I, at that time we had three people on the same line and we all had our own ring mm -hmm. kind of thing. Well, in talking to the old timers, they had eight people on their party line wow. and they all had their own ring, like mm -hmm. two short, one long, whatever that meant that that was yours. Uh -huh. Well, then the call came for you and then everybody else would pick up and go, <laughs> what's going on over at Amy's house, I wonder. So they, everybody would listen to everybody's conversations, of mm -hmm. course, but yeah. That's how that all worked. <laughs> and when I first moved out there, also, the gravel, the road was graveled about maybe a half a mile past the store, and I live wow. at the eight mile marker. So that was all gravel. The store is at the like two mile yeah, marker. Yeah, the two mile right? marker, okay. right. So, and then, you know, a few years later, it got to the bridge, and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, that was four miles up the creek. It was still gravel, and then finally they made it to our driveway, mm -hmm. and then it started gravel, and then now it's, it's paved <laughs> pretty much the whole way up. So, yeah. We're moving up. It's very exciting. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is, for sure. Uh, um, but speaking of events, you, you have community potlucks, right? We do. We do. We uh, started off doing four a year, mm -hmm. and then that's now cut down to just two a year. We have one in March, and then we have one in uh, September. Okay. And we generally try, I, because I'm the one that takes it all on, uh, find a speaker that will come talk about some historic thing. Okay. Like well, I just, the last person we had was Ann Billiter, and mm -hmm. she came and talked about Miriam's rose quilt. And Ann Billiter is with the Genealogical Society, she is. right? Yes, okay. she is. Why did you choose her to come? Because I had seen this presentation at oh, the okay. library, because <laughs> I'm part of the Friends of the Library at Eagle Point also, and mm -hmm. she had come and, and they went, that would be so great out there, you know, mm -hmm. because it, it really mapped how a lot of our predecessors came to that valley, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how the struggles for the family life and all that kind of stuff coming out, and, and it was very well received. A lot of people came, and it was, mm -hmm. it was good. So, so the, you said a lot of people came. Who comes to these community potlucks? Um, well, we put out a flyer telling that it's coming and mm -hmm. um, whomever wants to come. I mean, they so it's don't not have just to, like members only, it's no, anyone? No, it's okay. anyone that wants to come. I mean, we've had a couple of times we've had people come out from Medford, oh. you know, to come and see the mm -hmm. whatever presentation it might be. So we put it out there into the Upper Rogue Independent and we put it out there into the Mail, Mail Tribune uh, just to try to get other people coming out, you mm -hmm. know. So we generally have, oh, 30 to 40 people come. That's great. And yeah, it is. It's wonderful. It's all potluck and and we ask for donations if possible, and uh, that's how we kind of keep our doors open with uh -huh. that and renting out the hall for different uh, celebrations and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's how we keep our doors open. Okay. So, yeah. so, as the Lake Creek Historical Society, how do you preserve Lake Creek's history? Our um, office manager is really into the history of things, and she does mm -hmm. a lot of research. And she was able to get all the old census records and just different things about a lot of people call up and say, I'm related to Mrs. Smith that used to live out there in the 1800s. Do you have mm -hmm. any information? Mm -hmm. And she starts to dig and she'll go through the census records first, of course, uh -huh. and then go on from there and see, you know, when they, where they might have been on the creek and, mm -hmm. you know, how long they might have been there and, and kind of gives all that information. And we have it. Uh, cataloged in a lot of different uh, binders and stuff there mm -hmm. so anybody can come in and do research if you know they know that their family member was out there mm -hmm. so those kinds of things okay yeah what kind of objects do you have well in our little museum we have six um, display cases one is designated to the Indians because we had the Lagawa tribe that lived out there mm -hmm. and they're sort of a subsidiary of the rogues but they were just in the end of our little canyon and did a lot of, of trading and stuff with the Klamath Indians. Okay. So um, one of our teachers um, was able to get the, um, the tribe elder to come out and talk to the school kids. Oh, that's great. And so we have, we have hers on tape. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So it's it's really nice. So I put that display together. So that was really cool. What are some of the objects in that display? We have uh, some mortar and pestles, and mm -hmm. we have some um, arrowheads and stuff. And I did a thing where I talked about the different uh, food items that they might have used, like oh. the camas and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And we have that piece in there also, and some beadery and and mm -hmm. just sort of all different kinds of objects. Okay. Yeah, baskets. Okay. Indian corn, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. So, yeah. What about the other display cases? The next one to hers is military, because okay. we have lots of military uh, from back in the 40s, and then we have some in the 50s, and then um, I don't think we went, well, we might have gone into the Vietnam War, but I'm not really sure. I mean, I know we have some Vietnam vets there, but mm -hmm. uh, we went into the Korean War also. And so we just have um, homesteading families that served and then we have the newer people that are on the creek that have served okay. and then next to that we have one on one of we always highlight one of the pioneer families mm -hmm. and we try to get as many photos as we can as many research items as we can uh, where they lived uh, what was going on with them in the next cabinet and then the next one we have just lots of tools telephones um, those kinds of things from the area mm -hmm. And then you have our doorway, and then you jump to the next one, and um, it is 4-H, because we're a very strong, used to be a very strong 4-H community. Mm -hmm. And so we have pictures of one of our um, people out there when she showed her prize bull at the fair. How fun. And so, yeah, we have that, and there's like six kids in there that are all from the Lake Creek area mm -hmm. <laughs> showing their steers. And uh, that was back in the 50s, I believe it was. And um, a highlight kind of that family. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, Victor Gardner and his wife Harriet and family. The Gardners came out there way long time ago, like in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. And Victor was one of the, the children. And they stayed there on the family's homestead. And he was a renowned worldwide uh, violin maker. Really? Yes. And he, we have one of his violins that was there oh. that was donated by a woman whose husband used to play for the old time fiddlers mm -hmm. who passed on. And so she gave it back to Lake Creek, oh. which was really, really nice. Kind of nice. like coming home. I know. It was. It was really nice. Mm -hmm. And he was a surveyor also, and he surveyed a lot of the reservoirs and stuff around our area. Okay. So we have a little blurb about that. He and his wife also purchased our first fire department um, engine for us, mm -hmm. you know, and stuff and came to training. I mean, and they mm -hmm. were like in their 70s already, you know, when mm -hmm. they started coming to the <laughs> the fire department stuff. But um, yeah, so they were benefactors, I guess you could call them, okay. for a lot of different things around there. And then, uh, let's see, we have a case. Um, there was a school teacher that was born and raised in Lake Creek, Helen Barrow. Mm -hmm. And she was um, a teacher for many, many, many years. And she just passed on recently. And she was uh, not only a teacher in Lake Creek, a teacher in Eagle Point, um, a principal in Eagle Point, an administrator on the school board. I mean, she was just really school oriented. Mm -hmm. And she just passed on a few months ago. So we oh. were given some of her um, memorabilia mm -hmm. to put on display and, and so we were able to get a really nice case and put in her, like her rocking chair and a dress that she wore and her trunk and a bunch of pictures of all of her children and stuff that you know she had throughout the years because she never married um, so yeah it sounds like the local community is really dedicated to the historical society and really involved in it they are they really are we um, we can always use more volunteers to host mm -hmm. but uh, they really are. I mean, they, they step up when we really need it. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's all we can really ask. Do you have a story about a time when they did step up? Well, let's see. Not off the top of my head. I mean, okay. there's we have so many little projects that different people do. Mm -hmm. Like we have um, uh, gardens around both sides of the hall. Mm -hmm. And so whenever they need weeding or we need more bulbs or whatever, People just kind of come and go, here's this, here's this, here's this. And now it's just overflowing with beautiful <laughs> flowers. It's just wonderful. That's and then lovely. one lady, her forte is she loves to weed. So mm -hmm. she comes down and, you know, she'll spend two or three or four days, you know, over the couple weeks mm -hmm. weeding everything, you oh. know. And, and then, like, the, the band shell was kind of leaning a little bit. So mm -hmm. a couple guys came down and straightened it up. And then a couple other guys come and they 
clean the um, gutters off the building, and mm -hmm. you know, so it's just, it's not really a big, huge thing, but everybody does their Lots piece. Lots of little yeah. things. Yes, and it, and it all, you know, it all works out. It's just, it's wonderful. That's really lovely. Yeah. Um, one of your volunteers recently wrote a book. Yes. Our office manager, Marilyn Maloney, she uh, kept getting all these questions about the history of, of Lake Creek, the history of Lake Creek. So she went, all right, I'm going to write a book. So mm -hmm. she did. And it's, <laughs> it's just a pamphlet, you know, it's, uh -huh. but it's, you know, probably, I don't know, 40 pages long. Just a pamphlet. I know, just a pamphlet. <laughs> but she put in a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. But it, it talks about how Lake Creek kind of started, although that's been done many times, but then she kind of moved on from there and in the 40s when um, the community hall started and the mm -hmm. grain started and moved from there and talked about, you know, all different aspects, the floods and all that kind of stuff uh -huh. that happened in Lake Creek. That sounds really so, interesting. How, how would I get a hold of this book? <clears throat> she has them on sale at the hall okay. and um, they're for $10, so mm -hmm. it's a really good price. And um, if you wanted to get a hold of us, you can uh, call out there, 541-826-1513, or you can go online. We have a web page. We have um, email address and those kind of things. So mm -hmm. lots of ways to get a hold of us. We have time for one last question with Julie Thompson. Julie, what, what makes the Lake Creek Historical Society special? I think that it's all of the families that settled the area and all of their descendants that are still in the area adding their piece to the community. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in whatever way that they can help, they're really glad to help. Mm -hmm. You know, we, like I said, we are just doing the cemetery project, and so a lot of families are giving to that project because mm -hmm. their predecessors are buried there or something mm -hmm. like that, you know. Yeah. So I just think it's just that strong sense of community and they'll help out when and how they can, mm -hmm. yep. depending on what their likes and dislikes are. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. That's about it for today. Um, I'd like to thank today's guest, Julie Thompson, for, for her time, her enthusiasm, and her thoughtful conversation. Um, and I'd like to invite all of you to stop by the Lake Creek Historical Society and to enjoy Southern Oregon's rich history and see some really amazing objects. Mm -hmm. The Southern Oregon Historical Society's Downtown Research Library, Downtown Medford Research Library, is open Tuesdays through Fridays, noon to 4 p.m., and on fourth Saturdays from noon to 2 p.m. We also have amazing events out at Hanley Farm. Um, check out our websites for updated event information. The Southern Oregon History Show is sponsored by the Southern Oregon Historical Society and Jackson County Library Services. We, um, thanks to our sponsors, our volunteer crew, and RVTV. Join us next time for another episode of the Southern Oregon History Show. Thank you.